Yeah. And because I'm getting poked so much, I can't feel the lower part of my lip very well at all. Oh, really? Yeah. And of course, that affects my income because my sugar daddy's like my lips. Checking in with Dr. Nassus and Debro kind of feels like checking in with your parents. You know, they tell you all things you're not supposed to do, and then you go do them anyway. But they don't have to love it, but they have to love you. Remember he was telling us he was going to have all that lower extremity surgery? What so about the big like package the, he had that day? Yeah, I'm trying not to remember that, OK? Well, I did microneedling on my face and on my penis and scrotox. <laughs> Ouch. So I can show you from the front. Oh, I can't. He's here to see us and show us the result of his eight leg implants. He did it? He did it. Can you please send in Justin and his package? <laughs> Let's get right to the meat heart of the matter. Let's get back to the penis. <laughs> did it increase in size? Listen, I mean, it's girth for sure, but to get length, it's super hard. I mean, the only thing I have, like a stretcher. Imagine like a choker, right? It goes around up above your knee, just below where my implant is now. Right. There's a, like a bungee cord. And that, it pulls on that it? That goes and you attach it to the bottom of your penis Ow, and it pulls. Really? So you're supposed to wear that for a period of time until it starts to hurt. In my oh, opinion, you're stretching the ligament. <laughs> I know when I'm getting Paul for his birthday this year. <laughs> I want to look like a doll with full lips, so I'd had three rounds of lip filler when I was 17 years old. Then when I turned 18, I moved to LA because, I mean, it's the land of plastics. You can literally smell the silicone in the air, so it's where I'm meant to be. I definitely have branded myself around my lips, but it's becoming a problem because I'm getting them done so often. There's some nerve damage going on. I can definitely feel drinks are literally falling out of my mouth because I can't feel the cup. Obviously, I can't perform my sugar baby services. You know, that's obviously a problem for my bank account. I'll end up back in the cornfields of Indiana if I don't get the doctor's help. I'm just gonna have to beg them. <laughs> That's a lot of lip filler. Those are big lips. Can he close them? Looks like he can't. He, he's lost oral competence. Competence. Gone. Let's see if we can help him. Can you please send in Hurricane Garrett? Hurricane Garrett is here. Hurricane Garrett. Dr. Nelson. Sugar Nassim. Daddies. Nice oh. to meet you. <laughs> what do you think you have in each lip right now? Five in the top, five in the bottom. So you probably have 10 cc's of filler. Yeah. And because I'm getting poked so much, I can't feel the lower part of my lip very well at all. Oh, really? Yeah. And of course, that affects my income because my sugar daddy's like my lips, you know. What, what does that mean, sugar daddy? Like, some sugar daddies can just pay rent. Right. They can just buy you trips. I just wanted a monthly allowance. Have you ever felt anything hard in your lips at all? I definitely have. I really like that. Of course you <laughs> do. Go in a little more. I, I wanna... can't feel anything right there. Can't feel anything right there? Nothing. Okay, let me do like something. There and there. Tell me if it's sharp when I touch your lips. Sharp. I did barely felt that. Mm. I, I literally did not even feel that. Okay, so the center wow. again. Mm. Okay. If you go double what you have now, mm -hmm. you think your sensation is not great now? It's gonna be gone. No. You'll have zero sensation. Yeah. It's not the needles. Oh, yeah, so you don't think it's, it's not the needles? needles? It's the pressure. The blood supply to your lips can be affected so easy mm -hmm. that you can kill off the outer layer of your lip. Basically, you can kill off the skin, mm -hmm. become necrotic. Okay. Well, we've seen this. I've heard that. We've yeah. seen it. Mm -hmm. We've had patients come in, mm -hmm. we've worn them, and then they come in and they're screwed. I don't know of an implant to get them double the size they are now. I'm thinking now maybe we need to customize a lip Don't implant. do that. <laughs> Don't do it. Is this really what you want to do, especially putting yourself at risk? I do want my big lips. I don't know. I'm really looking forward to getting these lip implants. I've always dreamed of having these big, huge, basically pillows on my face. I mean, you all sleep on a mattress every night. Why not have them on your lips? Thank Please, you. Pleasure, OK? Nice Thank pleasure. You. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Be safe. I'm Danny Banks, I'm 30 years old, and I'm your favorite snow bunny. People call me a snow bunny because I'm a blonde, big booty white girl. Having this perfect booty has brought me to another level of success with making money, like, you know, being a booty model, you could say, an Instagram model, Instagram influencer. You know, it's my money maker. So far, I've done hip injections, lip injections, 
filler injections on my face. I had my boobs done. Chin lipo, ankle lipo. Isn't that weird? It is weird. I did my butt roll, so it's like right above your butt to kind of like give you that harder shape. And I've had five different rounds of butt injections by three different people. But the whole right side is just throw the whole right side away at this point. The bottom like doesn't cuff like the left side does. That big booty, it's just everything that I have to hold up to. So it's just a lot of pressure for me to have this perfect booty. And this is not right. <laughs> How did you get a buttock like this? Well, originally I wanted to get a BBL. At the time, I didn't have the money for it. So I was like, oh, easy way out. Let's just get instant results. And I did a round of hydrogel shots. OK, that was your first thing? Yeah. How many years ago was that? That was six years ago. Six years ago, OK. Yeah. Where, where was it done? In a hotel? It was in like a basement of a medical spa. And it was real hydrogel, uh, you think? I don't know. Did like, it come? You could see like the cans. It was like canisters, and it was like jelly-looking stuff. Canisters. Canisters. You mean yeah. they like went? Yeah. yeah. It was like two. They put two holes on one on each side of the cheek. Wow. And then like they fill up the big syringes. It was like huge syringes like it's this. Hydrogel. Loca. It wasn't. No. Oh my hydrogel god. Hydrogel comes preloaded in syringes. It sounds like you had maybe silicone or something from you know we see a lot Fix of. Fix the flat. <laughs> right. Right. I've seen every variety of craziness from plumbing supplies, concrete. It could be plastic. It could be illegal silicone. You never know what it is. But at the end of the day, if it's not medically approved, it's not supposed to be used. And it's disaster almost always. So OK, <clears throat> stand up for a sec. All right, so you have a really well-defined crease right here on your left leg. Right. But your right leg, you completely lose the connections that you used to have. You should not consider taking any amount of fat and putting it on top or mixing it in or layering it or anything, and I'll tell you why. Fat injection of the buttock is the most dangerous procedure in all of plastic surgery. Really? Yes. BBL? Yes. Oh, wow. It's the most fatal because there's a very short distance between these little blood vessels in the buttock and the main vein bringing blood back to your heart. heart and the lungs. If you get fat into there and it goes up to your lungs, game over. You have five million followers with that crease. Right. I think you're good with that crease. <laughs> just gonna live All right. With it. This guy would give his left testicle <laughs> for two hundred thousand more Instagram followers. No, he would. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Maybe we can collaborate. And we can do a booty workout together. <laughs> I'll feel this. Yeah, we do it like. What I like about the anime figure is that the breasts are like sexualized and huge. I love large breasts. I have a boob fetish, as you would say. I feel like it's so empowering. Like. Boobs are power. Like, they can get you anywhere in life. <laughs> I love dressing up as anime characters. I love the style. When I walk down the street, I definitely do get a lot of negative attention, but I don't care. It doesn't censor me. Some people call me anime tits, and I love it. <laughs> I started watching anime as a child, and at 17, I watched one of my favorite animes, and the main character had huge boobs, and she was a sexy female warrior, and she didn't care. She fought with a sword with her boobs out, and I was like, oh my god, I want to be that when I grow up. <laughs> I'm still not where I want to be. I had a breast complication, and now my breasts look like they're two different people, so I have to fix it. But I want people to look at me and be like, oh, f she's fake, you know? And I want to be like, hell yeah, I'm fake. Like, I don't care. I want to look that way. <laughs> What's the outfit? I'm Hestia from Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? It's an anime. Are there a lot of women in dungeons all the time, or what? Uh, yeah, sexy female warriors with big boobs. Huh. Is that what you're into? Yeah. It's actually inspired my plastic surgery. Oh, really? Yeah, like very big boobs, very tiny little nose, yeah. tiny waist, yeah. and a cute bum. So that's like the look that I've been trying to go for. And when I turned 21, I had my first breast augmentation. It was 470 cc, and then- Was that silicone or saline? Silicone. All right. But then when I woke up, I said, oh my god, no, they're still too small. Right away. Yeah. Seven months later, I got 800 cc's. So you doubled? Yeah. Same doctor? Yeah. I got them done again. 1,600 cc's saline. Did you know about that one? <laughs> no. 
One week later, I started to have fevers. Just a fever, no breast pain? No. So then I go to the ER, they ran some tests, and they told me that it was my right breast that was causing the problem and that it was a staph infection. The plastic surgeon came and he said, we're going to give you antibiotics mm -hmm. and perform an emergency surgery to remove the implant. Right. And I said, are you going to put something in? And he says, yes, I'll try to put an implant in, but it has to be a bit smaller. What else? I want to make this breast 1,600, and also, I, in the near future, I want to go up to 2,000 cc's, because that's my goal. You told me you want to take the big one and leave the small one, and you want to change the big one for the small one. Oh, you see, that's what I hear. You told me. Wait, Mom, you believe in her? promise to me. <laughs> so you're not going to listen to your mom? It's my passion. It makes me happy. It gives me a reason to live. What if it kills you? So why don't we go in the exam room, and maybe we can give you some really good advice and help you, huh? You're going to hear some advice, but you're not going to like it. I'm just telling you that right now. You might like my advice. Okay. You're not going to like mine. OK. I'm amazed that your doctor took a breast implant that was infected, mm -hmm. took it out, put a smaller one in, closed it up, and first of all, I'm amazed that it worked. Yeah. Because it shouldn't have worked. It should have pussed out. Because the foreign body's still there. You know, it's not like you got rid of the thing that the bacteria is attaching to. Be that as it may, it's not over. You're on antibiotics, so you don't know whether it's been completely treated or not. There is no doubt you cannot have surgery right now because you have to figure out whether the bacteria that were in there are just lying dormant are just being suppressed by the current oral antibiotics you're taking or whether they're gone. I mean, it sucks because this was my dream. This is serious, Carla. I re we already talked about this. I really want 1,600 cc's. No. So let me just tell you my opinion. When I hear something like that, it upsets me. I have a brand new baby girl. If you were my daughter sitting here, and I'm kind of acting like that right now, because I imagine my little girl sitting here right now, mm -hmm. I'd be going crazy. You're trying to look like a friggin' cartoon character, which is not real, OK? If you continue down this path, you're going to ruin yourself. It could affect your health. That's the most important thing. And you can die from it. You're not touching your nose. You, I'm not going to even examine your nose. If you touch your nose right now, make a, a slope and make it like this character, you'll ruin your face. You're too young and beautiful to do that. I'm talking emotionally from my heart. When I first had my first procedure, I thought, OK, that's it. No. But then I wake up and I realize, no, I think I need a bit more. Yeah. And then I think in my head, I'm going to be so happy. I'm going to feel 100 times better. And then I do, and then that kind of feeling goes away, and then I feel ugly again. That's called addiction. Mm -hmm. So I think the smartest thing for you to do is for you guys as a family, work with a therapist and really try to work through this to see if you could kind of help yourself. All of a sudden, because you think it's going to make you happy, then you already know that there's a high and then a low. And that can lead to depression. That can lead to all kinds of things. So yeah. you've got to get some help. Promise me you won't do anything with least okay. without telling your mom. Yes, first. I promise. I think that's fair. Yeah. I think that the advice that Dr. Nassif and Dr. Debro gave me, they made a lot of good points. And I'm really hoping that if I continue to have surgery, that it really doesn't ruin my relationship with my mom. But I have a lot to work on. <laughs>